Hello, hi, I am Matea from Ljubljana Pride Association and today here I have uh, Dina with me and uh, we are going to say a few words about the uh, queer solidarity uh, which is the topic of this year's uh, Ljubljana Pride uh, Festival. So Dina, so that I wouldn't have to be the one introducing you, I would ask you to share a few, to say a little bit about yourself, who you are, uh, what do you do and uh, you know like we already talked about the thing that we want to hear is actually what kind of uh, what is your spark? What brought you to the work that you're doing? What is what is your story behind? Okay. Uh, ciao, Ljubljana Pride. So as Matea already said, I'm Dina. My pronouns are she, they, and I'm representing the organizing committee of Beha Pride March here. It has been a lovely, a lovely days in Ljubljana, and I think it's going to be a lovely week as well. You know, we're getting closer to the Pride March as well, and I think that it's very important, the, the theme that you're doing this year, the, the theme of solidarity. For me personally, so what is my spark? What is it? What is something that keeps me, you know, going? Something that is mm. my fuel is that I became an activist when I was thirteen. So I have been in activism for more for half of mm. my life. So what happened is short story. Uh, I was forced into conversion therapy, and that necessarily, I in that moment, I wasn't aware that I was an activist. Mm. I just know that younger me knew, in 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 her heart, that wow, so other kids go through mm. this as well. So I'm gonna try to fight it, to not give them the validation of mm. that you cured somebody of being part of the LGBTI community. So that is all how it started. My basically, so my activistic route wasn't something that I chose. Mm. It's something that chose me. Yeah. So the, the first part of activism was basically, you know, around surviving. So it was pure mm. survival instinct. Uh, there wasn't this motivation of, oh, I want to change the world. It was more of a motivation of, oh, I want to save myself first mm. and then see what I can do later on. So later on in my life, when I got out of the conversion therapy that lasted for four years, then I started seeing a bit more mm. uh, of a bigger picture that why is it important that nobody goes mm. through conversion therapy, that nobody suffers from family violence, mm. bullying in high school, systematic uh, victimization that also happens, a system that is completely uh, not ready to help you out if you are part mm. of the LGBTI yeah. community because they themselves have these uh, thoughts in their head that you're mm. less of if you're part of the LGBTI community. So that's what I'm going for that's what i'm searching and whenever i feel demotivated because believe it or not it happens we're, we're human and i'm not immune to that i just remember the younger version of myself mm. and why it all started and i owe it to her mm -hmm. I, I owe it to her and that's something that keeps me motivated and when i speak about you know why am i an activist who are, who are my target groups mm. what do i do in my activist life I always tell i am there because of her and I owe it to her mm. to create a safer space for her to live, to mm. create a happier life for her, but not just for her, for every little Dina living in Bosnia and Herzegovina mm. in my country. That's something that I that I want to achieve through, through activism. Mm. So I do all sorts of activism. I organize protests. I also have my podcast called Safopod that is the only lesbian podcast in Balkans right now. So I do it with my friend Milica. I do work locally. Mm. I do work uh, regionally. I do work on a state level in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I do a lot of advocacy. I do a lot of uh, community-based activities to mm. try to strengthen our community for uh, joining the movement and joining the fight for better of us all. Mm. And I love I love it that the theme of this year's Liban Pride is solidarity mm. because I was brought up on queer solidarity. Mm. That yeah, is, that is the base of... Uh, that is the base. Because there's nothing without that. That's nothing. I, I, that's just my normal. That's mm. how I have been brought up, you know, by the movies like Pride or the new movie Moxie that came out that talks more about the feministic approach and everything. It's just something that I have been brought mm. up on and it's something that is my core value, which is being mm. uh, just... Mm, practicing solidarity with the LGBTI community as well, but with other mar marginalized group mm -hmm. that, that need our support. Because we do have to keep in mind that even within the LGBTI community, there are identities that belong to different marginalized mm -hmm. groups. So yeah. for me, if you have a fight, 
and then you're leaving somebody out that's not a good 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 way to to go around the the problems that we're mm. all facing yeah i mean hearing th- thank you for thank you for sharing your, your story you know like i heard it already many times by now but you know like it really you can hear that spark and uh it's it's still uh, quite inspirational so i was wondering um now that you mentioned you know like from from your beginnings yeah. and you know like coming from this survival mode which i think is still quite often the yeah. reality of most of the people that that i know and so on um this internal motivation and everything. Um, you've been quite long on the scene, right? Yes. From 13 to now. Yes. That's uh, that's quite many years. So I was wondering, like, could you maybe tell us a bit more from the practice? Uh, you know, like, what are the things that, uh, when you think about solidarity, especially in the terms of solidarity here in this, in this area, mm-hmm. in the wider ba- Balkans, yeah. let's say, uh, could you maybe share some of the things that you... Um, some good examples, some practices that uh, you would say like, look, this is solidarity. Yeah. Uh, this is how solidarity looks like in practice. This is not tokenism. This is not uh, just a word on the on the paper because solidarity is often this word that we often yes. hear, throw it around. But I, I would really like to, you know, like see and hear, you know, like what are some concrete examples? So what are some... How do we practice it? Yeah. So what are some concrete examples of solidarity? Again, I have been brought up on solidarity so there's a lot of different things that happened for me mm. where I experienced that queer solidarity and I also very much agree that sometimes we throw around the world word solidarity it's like oh I'm standing in solidarity with you for me solidarity is something that is proactive something that is that doesn't happen just once so solidarity isn't something that, oh, I come to Ljubljana Pride once to support the community in Ljubljana and then I forget about you mm. where when I go back I hope home. So. No, 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 <laughs> that's that's definitely not gonna happen. So for me, actually the queer solidarity that happened when I was going through a tough period was something that helped me survive. That's why I feel so- solidarity within myself as a core value. Uh, an example is when we were Unfortunately, the organizing committee of Beha Pride March uh, on March this year, we were attacked and it was an organized attack by the police and by the hooligans. When we suffered uh, the, the, the consequences of the attack that put uh, mm. really a lot of tool on us, I personally felt really dehumanized and it's something that I'm still working on today to rehumanize myself. Mm. The first responders, the first support came from the LGBTI community in all different sorts of levels, capacity. It doesn't have to necessarily be something that is materialistic, Mm. like giving us support for, I don't know, uh, if we have the costs of uh, somebody who's representing us in, in the judiciary or whatever. It just came from all sorts of... I, I remember when I came back to Tuzla after the attack, the community came to our place to buy merches, merch from, from, from the organizing committee of Beha mm-hmm. Pride March to show that support because we are unfortunately uh, still mm-hmm. faced with the problem that the police want us to pay mm-hmm. for the additional security measures and because we are the informal group and it's 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 very abstract and very funny that you need to pay for your security. I think that security is something that you should be having Mm -hmm. whenever and that it's supposed to be free. And they came to the office to buy merches because we know that the LGBTI community is usually on the lower spectrum of the social economical uh, class. They still came to us. They they bought us merch. There were uh, so many words that 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 for me resonated mm. that i i believe deeply that my process of rehumanization mm. after the attack is based in solidarity of the lgbti community and not just the lgbti community a lot of the the public support came as well that, mm. that actually mm. not just said that they stood in solidarity with us they did something mm. about it so 
That's something that is really amazing. Inspired by our, our converse, conversation just before, uh, when we actually talked a lot about also people who are, you know, like maybe not out yet uh, and maybe cannot physically attend, uh, uh, I don't know, some events, come to phys- come physically to the places and so on. Like, what would be your message uh, to those people? How can they actually support? Uh, how can they actually support? How can they express the solidarity, for instance, in situations like this? So how can the people who are not out... Uh, participate in the events or show solidarity to the LGBTI community for me your safety is the baseline for everything so you don't necessarily have to be out you don't necessarily have to be visible you don't necessarily have to be on the front line of activism and speak loudly uh, to the policy makers to the lawmakers to the people who oppress us for me it's enough that you live authentically with your identity, that you are part of the community. And I do believe that, and in many cases, even people who were not out, when something happens within the community, they will come, even though they're afraid. And that takes courage. And I believe mm. that just one you know, crazy act of courage coming to, to, to a public event is something that changes the world. And of course, social media is a big part of also uh, advocacy towards LGBTI rights. There's a lot of uh, safe spaces online that that Mm. people can find and engage in that way because uh, even though like online security is something that is also a problem and you could be Mm. targeted from hackers and people who want to access your profile, I still think that uh, solidarity is also spreading the word. Mm. It's also giving the correct information. And I remember, again, reflecting on the attack that happened in Banja Luka. There was a lot of misinformation about that attack. And the community, even the people who are not out, shared the correct information. Mm. So even when you just share correct information, that doesn't uh, put you in a risk of people assuming Mm. that you're part of the LGBTI community. You can just spread the word. You can talk with your friends about why is it important to show support to the Mm. LGBTI community. You can talk to your friends online or on Discord or whatever you you are that you live your life in. So there's a lot of different ways that you can Mm. help out. You don't necessarily, again, have to be out, have to be visible. You just have to be, um, in a sense, connected to the community. And Mm. I hope that every single one of us feel connected to the community mm. because sometimes that mm. that can be a bit tough if you're not out if you can't come to the, to the event speak directly to people mm. who share your experiences or have similar experience with you you can just share the correct information mm. spread the word talk to people who you feel comfortable with talking on how maybe uh, the part of solidarity that is really important and thank you for this question is reflecting on our privileges so if an LGBTI person who is not out talks to their friends who are a straight ally and then that friend stands in solidarity publicly mm. within uh, for the LGBTI community, I think that directly uh, also connects that friend mm. to that point of solidarity. Because uh, I, we do need to understand that it's very hard to be a proud and visible and out in the society that constantly tries to, you know, erase us from existence, constantly mm. puts violence upon us, it's constantly discriminating against us. And even after all of that, you're still in your room accepting yourself as part of the LGBTI community. That is solidarity for yourself. Mm. And that directly reflects to the community. Yeah. No, and, and I, I love that, uh, that, we're, that we spend the last few days talking about that and we always return to this moment of non-formal networks, friendships, connections, because this is where things start, yes. right? Yes. Uh, and this is how the communities are being built. Um, amazing, perfect. Thank you no for having me. No one could say it better. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>